For my mom's birthday this year, I got her a genetic testing kit from National Geographic. This wasn't like 23andMe that kind of shows you what diseases you can expect to get throughout your life, because I mean, you know, <laughs> happy birthday. No, this traces your lineage back, you know, hundreds of thousands of years to show your place in the whole human ancestral tree, and, and the results are pretty interesting. As it turns out, I share genetic markers with Abraham Lincoln, Queen Victoria, and Copernicus. And probably like thousands of nobodies. Most of my lineage is from Northwestern Europe, Shocker. And I'm about 2% Neanderthal. Judging from my body hair, I would have thought that would be higher. Of course, if you go back far enough, we all descend from a single common ancestor, what scientists call mitochondrial Eve. But the vast majority of us actually have all of our DNA funneled through a population bottleneck that occurred about 70,000 years ago. Because according to genetic research, very similar to this, we almost went extinct. And nobody really knows why. Genetic research showed that African populations actually have a very much higher genetic diversity than people who came out of Africa, which kind of supports the theory that human you know, life began in Africa and then traveled out from there. But it also says that since the rest of the world's genetic population is a lot less diverse, that means that it came from a smaller gene pool. And the studies have shown that that gene pool went, goes down to about 1,000 to 10,000 breeding pairs. More people will probably see this video than existed on Earth 70,000 years ago. This is also supported by a study in 2008 that looked at the mitochondrial DNA of the Khoi and San people in South Africa. Mitochondrial DNA is obviously DNA that comes from the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, but it's also only passed down from mothers. This powerhouse DNA from mom study showed that the Khoi and San people actually diverged from the rest of the population about anywhere from 90,000 to 150,000 years ago. So the idea is that humans kind of came up in Africa and then about 100,000 or so years ago began to spread out from there, but then the population hits this huge bottleneck. But why? One of the more popular explanations through the years has been the Toba explosion. Toba was a volcano in Indonesia that erupted around 74,000 years ago and the reason why I'm saying that in the past tense that it was a volcano is because it's now a lake because that ish blew up. The Toba supervolcano is the largest explosion that has occurred since human beings have been on this planet just beating out Andre the Giant's farts. The explosion dumped 15 centimeters or 6 inches of ash across South Asia and the South China Sea and released 28,000 cubic kilometers of magma. It rates an 8 in the Volcano Explosivity Index, which is the highest rating of any known explosion on Earth. You did not want to be near this thing. By near, I mean anywhere on the planet. Because according to the Toba Catastrophe Theory, which was first posed by Ann Gibbons in 1993, this is what caused the big human bottleneck that caused our genetic diversity to go down 70,000 years ago. The explosion created a 10-year volcanic winter that lowered temperatures around the globe 3 to 5 degrees Celsius. Keep in mind, we were already in an ice age at the time, so yeah, not good timing for this. A period of cooling lasting 1,000 years may have followed this that wiped out food populations, but not just for humans, but for species around the world. One argument that supporters of this theory point to is the explosion of Mount Tambora in 1815. The Mount Tambora eruption is the largest one in recorded human history, measuring a 7 on the Volcano Explosivity Index, and it put so much ash into the atmosphere that it caused what became known as the year without a summer. It was basically winter for an entire year. Crops didn't grow, people starved, it was bad. But the Toba explosion was a hundred times stronger than the Tambora explosion, so the effects of it would have been equally so, right? So airtight case. except. This is science, so of course not. The Toba theory has come under scrutiny over the last few years uh, because of research done by Chad Yost and his team where they took core samples from Lake Malawi that seems to disprove this entire thing. Mostly that these cores didn't show any proof of a volcanic winter. Also, this bottleneck seems to have not affected the people living in Africa, just those who left Africa. So it's possible there might not have been a bottleneck at all. That there was just a very small population of people that came out of Africa and then you know, the population boomed after that. So the real explosion might not have been Toba at all, just us. Now, a similar and far more dramatic bottleneck did occur in the Americas. Now, we all know that Native Americans made their way into North America from Asia by crossing over a land bridge in the Bering Strait around 16,000 years ago. This was during the Ice Ages when the water level dropped and it exposed an underwater shelf that created a, a bridge about 1,000 kilometers wide. And scientists actually have a name for that area now. They call it Beringia. But what might surprise you is how many people apparently made this journey. According to a 2005 study from Rutgers University doing genetic testing on Native American people, they found that the pre-1492 population in the Americas all descended from 70 people. 70. 
From only 70 people, the Native Americans spread throughout North America and South America, rising to a population level of around 100 million people. And then the Europeans came. Whether it was a cataclysmic event that choked off our human population way back when, or if we had just all descended from a small group of brave explorers, humans have made some pretty strong stuff. And it turns out we're a lot more close-knit family than we thought we were. So thanks for watching, fam. This is an interesting topic. I'll put some links down below that you can go check out some other videos that cover this subject really well. T-shirts available at the store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Go there, find some cool nerdy stuff, and walk around and have people think, wow, this guy is really cool. Or a nerd, or both, whatever. If this is your first time here, I invite you to check out some of my other videos, and if you like those, please do hit subscribe, because uh, uh, I keep coming back with stuff uh, all the time. You might like it. Oh, and say hi to people down below. We got a cool crowd watching this show. All right, that's it for today. You guys go out, have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.